Okay, one of the, the uh, common uses uh, of ultrasound in the emergency department is evaluation of the aorta for uh, aneurysm, abdominal aneurysm, AAA. Uh, and so we'll briefly run through that, uh, that indication right now. Uh, the indications for this would really be anyone in whom the diagnosis is considered, uh, uh, and obviously that's most likely in an, an older patient with abdominal or back pain. Uh, uh, as we noted in the vascular exam, we're going to start this exam in the transverse plane and first of all identify the vessel. Um, and in uh, a thin patient like this, uh, this is fairly easy, but the first thing that should be done to make sure that, that uh, one is, is, is certain that one's looking at the right structures is identify the vertebral body, uh, which once again is uh, a, an, like an inverted U, uh, like a hillside uh, with posterior shadowing right here. Um, and once the structure is definitely identified, then depth adjustments can be made um, to uh, bring the, the vascular structures anterior to it into uh, a, better, uh, a better, better alignment, a better depth. The, uh, the arterial is going to be on the patient's left. Uh, make sure the probe is being held the right way around if there's any confusion and that the screen is, uh, isn't, has not been reversed. Here's the screen indicator. And on the patient's right is the inferior vena cava. And the vessel should be scanned uh, from the uh, diaphragmatic hiatus, which might require a little bit uh, more depth, all the way down to the bifurcation. So um, we will uh, adjust the, uh, the focus uh, to approximately the right depth here. Um, and here is the, the, the aorta as it's first seen coming through the diaphragmatic hiatus right here. Um, and it should be evaluated in real time before any stills for, for measurements are obtained because uh, saccular aneurysms can be very localized and pausing and freezing and then restarting means that uh, one can actually end up uh, uh, skipping areas of the aorta. Continuous, systematic, methodical, real-time scanning is essential. Uh, that being said, there are frequently uh, moments when bowel gas uh, uh, impedes view of the aorta. So it's necessary when a good window is found to use this fanning motion to systematically examine as much of it as you can when you have a good window. And that's what's happening here. And then when we get down to an area where bowel gas intervenes, and in fact we can scan straight up and down like, more or less like a CAT scanner here without, without resorting to that, but occasionally bowel gas intercedes like this. And when that happens, uh, a number of different techniques can be used to get it out of the way. First of all, as we mentioned, we can find a good window and scan through the good window and then go below the area of bowel gas and then scan again up and down uh, to, 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 to uh, cover the, the skipped area. Um, other techniques that can be used are actually gentle pressure and motion like this frequently moves the bowel uh, out of the way and it peristalsis sideways, which is not really happening in this case, but this should be tried with gentle pressure um, to, to, to ensure that the, uh, the, the aorta is seen systematically from top to bottom. Uh, uh, again, uh, here we are, we're going to skip over this area here and then try and find, and sometimes moving from side to side is also a technique that could be helpful. Here's the aorta right here again, and again scanning from in this fanning motion like this and then scanning steadily down until we reach the bifurcation right here. Once this systematic transverse scan has been done, a longitudinal scan can certainly be employed. And here we see the aorta in longitudinal with uh, um, its characteristic uh, fairly thick walls. Uh, um, and uh, its entire length can be seen here uh, with the superior mesenteric artery arising right here in longitudinal, and the splenic artery arising immediately superior to that. Uh, in this case, we can see the uh, uh, aorta uh, heading in a superior direction much further than is usually the case up behind the liver here and actually up into the thorax here above the, uh, um, uh, above the, uh, the diaphragm right here. Um, uh, it can be seen actually through the heart, uh, which is an unusual situation for this. Um, 
Uh, once this has been done, then still images can be obtained, and measurements are usually made in the transverse plane uh, to avoid uh, a cylinder tangent effect, and usually are made uh, at high, middle, and low levels, um, uh, although in a case which is patently normal like this, it might be possible to uh, use slightly more, uh, slightly less, num less uh, numbers of measurements. Uh, here's the, uh, the renal vein that we saw before, the left renal vein arising from the IVC, and the, uh, I think we can see right here, the right renal artery arising from the aorta. 90% um, of aneurysms are going to occur below this level. And as we adjust depth here, um, we obtain st uh, a, a, a still image here of the aorta. We freeze, uh, and then uh, ideally we find the uh, a, a diastolic, sorry, a systolic diameter, which is the largest the largest diameter we can find as we go through the cine loop, uh, which is about here. Uh, we apply the calipers from outside wall to outside wall, and usually the, the, uh, uh, the walls are much more easily seen in the uh, transverse, uh, sorry, in the, uh, the, the anterior and posterior wall uh, rather than side to side due to the, uh, uh, the, the, the effects of uh, ultrasound on a tangential structure like the, the lateral walls of the aorta. Uh, as mentioned, the uh, measurement will be made uh, once again from outside wall to the outside of the wall over here to be as conservative as possible. And right here we see uh, we have a, a measurement of 16.3 millimeters in this case. Uh, when th the measurements have been made in still images or uh, preferably uh, the video clip has been saved, uh, this concludes the, uh, the exam of the aorta.